Hi, boys and girls. So I'm on the Mercedes website looking at a GLC 300 I ordered. This is the SUV version, which makes sense because this is sold as an SUV. You notice the square back where you store all your gear, lots of room back there. Looking at the Mercedes-Benz website, we have two flavors. Here's the GLC 300 SUV with the full body and large storage area in the rear. And then you move over here, what they call the GLC Coupe, where you have a car hatchback body on top and all the heavy SUV hardware on the bottom. Interesting. Before we go out and take a look at the vehicle, let's look at the price sheet. Starts off at a reasonable price, but here come the option sheets. You want a fancy silver paint job and leather, this is how much it's going to cost you. $750, $1620, and $200 for some wood trim. But wait, there's more. I'll just scroll down real quick. If there's something you want to see, just freeze frame. And here we go. The only useful things on here I'd want are the larger wheels and the upgraded sound system. That adds a couple grand to the tab. The other stuff we really don't need. But here we get it anyway, wanted it or not. At least we're getting a real Mercedes made in Germany. That's worth a few extra bucks. Safety rating hasn't been done yet. And here's a fuel economy rating, pretty good for a heavy SUV. Regardless of the body style. We take this out in the real world and see if these numbers are true. We don't do fake numbers here, we do real stuff. So here it is in the flesh, so to speak. All the GLC 300s look the same from the front. Nice looking design, I think. And as I said, other Mercedes SUVs, why do we need two emblems on the front instead of one? I prefer the old star mounted on the hood myself, but people like to steal those, so I guess that's one of the reasons they stopped. Plus European rules saying they might harm pedestrians if you hit them. Uh, yeah, only in Europe, right? And here's a side view. And those fancy AMG type wheels you're paying extra for. They do look nice. And by the way, these are Continental brand tires. We always check the brand of tires when we get a vehicle to see if they're dumping out some cheap Chinese knockoffs. But this is a good brand, so no complaints from me. And here's the difference. Instead of a squared off SUV type body, we store lots of gear. We get the slanted hatchback coupe from the car body design which eliminates a lot of storage space as we can see and we always check and see if there's a spare tire this is my tire repair kit but let's take a look under the floor yes we do get a compact a lot of glare here let me get out of the way okay it's that time of day folks sun glare can't do anything about it a lot of extra storage space under here, too. And a lock to secure it at all. And as we do all our videos, we're going to take the headlights out in the dark and see they perform, as well as do a night drive. We already did a video on that on YouTube and posted it. If you didn't see it, no problem. We'll have a link for that here so you can see the entire road test, part one and two. Here's what you might be asking yourself. Why do you want a car body on top of an SUV? And lose all the room advantages you get on an SUV. Well, some people just don't want an SUV. They don't need to haul gear. They don't need to haul people or kids. Maybe a single person or just a married couple. But they might live on a place where the roads are very rough. Lots of snow, ice, maybe forest roads. They have to go to their cabin for the weekend. So I guess you could consider this kind of like a supercar. A car that drives on the street and be taken off-road. But you don't want to haul gear. That would be called, not an SUV, a SAV for Sport Activity Vehicle. Although Mercedes doesn't call that in their catalog. That's what they are called by other manufacturers, and that's what this is. SAV. Under the hood is a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. Turbocharged. 255 horsepower. Doesn't sound like much, but with 295 pounds-feet of torque. A 2,000 RPM and a 48-volt 
hybrid assist. It's supposed to have lots of low end grunt. We'll take this out in the real world to find out. It's with the real world fuel economy numbers. Up to 30 MPG, they say. We'll find out that too. And stick to a 9 speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive. One thing I do not like right off the bat is all this cladding we have. Supposedly it's there to protect the bodywork if you take this vehicle off road. Okay, I get it, but do we need so much? Because you have all this dirt and garbage that builds up on here. This results in a super wide rocker panel. Look at all this. Every time you step in the vehicle, your pants are rubbing on this. If it's clean, not a problem, but if you have dirt, mud, sand, whatever on here, it's going to get on your pants. That's why I'm wearing my gym clothes today. If you're in the habit of wearing a business suit to work with a light color, or a female that wears slacks with white pants, <laughs> you better carry some cleaning rags and wipe this off before you get in or your day is not going to go well. If you need to haul stuff, the second row seats do fold down. But how this can be classified as a pie of passengers beyond me because with two bucket seats in the front, you only have room for two and you're not going to fit three people back here. <laughs> three chimpanzees, maybe. And the headroom is limited because of the slanted roof. And rear visibility is a bit limited, to say the least. On the positive side, I cannot complain about the materials and workmanship. First class all the way. No cost cutting in this car. Or SUV. Or SAV whatever you want to call it. Top grade all the way. Okay, the GLC 300 be taken off-road according to the instruments it can here on the main info screen. Our off-road program. You can also bring up off-road gauges on the gauge cluster. There are the gauges you can bring up like the classic. Pardon the glare, but we have the sun hitting us right now. The Sport or the Understated. If you press the dynamic control gives you a choice from Eco Mode, Comfort, Sport or Individual Program with the small light show. As well as a very nice camera system. And this is the one I was looking for, the 360 degree camera system. <laughs> this is so cool. I never get tired of playing with these. We do get paddle shifters on the steering wheel for manual shifting. Where they belong, not on the steering column like some of the other manufacturers do. Like Ferrari. Yeah, they get it wrong. They belong on the wheel. But they can always be reached. One thing I like about the GLC 300 Coupe, it not only looks like a car, it drives like a car. Steering's very quick. The turning circle is extremely tight. As we'll do here. So it's not hard to fit in a parking space. In Comfort Road, the suspension is pretty smooth, although these big wheels and tires do let their presence be known if you're getting on rough pavement. Even on smooth pavement, there's a, some thumping and, yeah, you know the drill. Thump, 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 bang, 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 but it's very mild. It's not a big deal, really. we got a pothole coming up here. Okay, didn't feel that too bad. Even though we have a Low horsepower rating, pulling a heavy vehicle with all-wheel drive. I never felt underpowered in this when driving at the torque in the 48-volt hybrid system. You have lots of bottom-end power. And it does move out with authority. And these brakes are near perfect. By the way, the climate controls are very simple to use. In fact, all of the newer Mercedes models have controls that are pretty easy to use compared to what they were doing a decade ago, where they were nightmares 
even things like air conditioning or heating and radio controls took an engineering degree to operate it appears those horrible days are gone and they're getting their act together each year keeps getting better I really do like this engine no lack of power I'm so impressed with the way this vehicle drives in the city I think we should take it out in the country and take some mountain roads after that we're going to get on the highway do a fuel economy test so don't go away This little four-cylinder engine might be short on horsepower, but not short on torque. Got lots of bottom end grunt. And going up this mountain grade, pulls like a champ. You would think it's a V6. If you weren't looking under the hood to see it isn't. Pretty smooth and quiet too. A very, very nice motor. Mercedes did a great job on this. And in spite of the high ground clearance, the wide tires, an excellent balance, and all-wheel drive are sticking to the pavement like glue. The sandals like a sports sedan. Although in many ways, I guess it kind of is. And I like the sport mode on the gauge cluster. It lights up real nice at night. The roads are a bit slick because of the rain and snow we've had this week, but again, with the big tires and all-wheel drive, the extra traction results in a bit more safety. Overall, I really like this Benz. It's so easy to drive. I just fit right in. No hassles, no problems. One of the best Benzes I've driven all year. This is probably the least expensive one. I've been running this downhill pretty hard and the brakes don't even seem to be hot. They're certainly not fading. That's a German car, right? That's what we expect for these price tags. Well, I'm impressed. So the next thing to do, we're going to take this out on the highway and do a fuel economy test around 120 miles. So don't go away. Fuel economy, mixed commuting, averaging 29 miles per hour, 363 miles, averaging 24.8 mpg. Now let's take a highway trip. And won't get any better numbers just sitting here not moving, so let's get on the road. This is a very nice highway cruiser, at least on smooth pavement. When you get on rough pavement, there's a bit of thumping from these big tires and wheels, but nothing serious. You get used to it. Putting the mode in comfort instead of sport certainly helps. Or comfort. That's why it's called comfort. And at 75 miles per hour, we're only pulling around 1,800 RPM with the 9-speed automatic we've got here. We're coming to the end of our little trip. I have to say, spending just under two hours in this vehicle. Very, very comfortable. Very relaxed. Do not feel worn out at all. Nice highway cruiser. Interesting. Earlier, in city commuting, averaging 29 miles per hour, we got 24.8 mpg average, and on our 122 highway trip, 122 miles that is, we got 24.8, exactly the same. Interesting. In our hour 42 minutes of driving. Of course, you got to remember this is an SUV with a race suspension, big tires are pushing a lot of air, so maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Not a bad figure though. I wasn't too happy with the fuel economy we got the other night on our highway trip, so we're going to do another one. Keeping the cruise control on, no passing. Maybe we'll do better this time. 
And that's the end of our trip, and Mercedes-Benz claims 30 miles to the gallon on the highway under ideal conditions, so did we make it? Let's take a look. Well, 117 miles at 73 miles per hour, 30.1 MPG. Made it right on the nose by one point. Can't complain about that. So what's my take on this Benz after we get driving? On a scale of 1 to 10, uh, pretty close to a 10. I can't find anything to bitch about. Very nice vehicle, one of the nicest business I've ever driven. If you're worried about that four-cylinder engine being underpowered, don't. Very, very nice. If you want to see the night driving headlight test, there's a link coming up. Click and watch.